more like real football, to put it as head coach Cliff Kingsbury did earlier today, as the pads for the first time here at Cards Camp come on here this afternoon at State Farm Stadium. As we welcome you, Craig Rielu, Mike Jarecki, the special edition of Cards Cover 2. Yes, day three, but day one in full pads. The question is, how much hitting are we going to see? Not going to see these guys tackling players to the ground, but yes, football can officially begin here because it's a little bit different when the pads come on. Yeah, and you know, obviously we got a chance to talk to J.R. Sweezy today, and he's one of the physicality guys that the Cardinals obviously obtained in the offseason, and you know, there's a way to practice, and you know, when you put the pads on, I still think skill position players, you know, you put a little more, a couple of weight on you, where you can, are you run the same route, but I think when you put the pads on, really it's the interior. Yes. Defensive line, offensive line, and obviously we'll possibly see some one-on-one matchups but this is the first time since these guys have hit so I think tomorrow we'll see more than we will today but you got to get in the pads first and kind of get knock some of the rust off you want to get kicked in the shin not purposely but just to go through some aches and pains where you're ready for it next time well and remember Carson Palmer would always say he would like to be hit welcomed that first hit just as you said MJ to kind of get that rust off and after that it's like okay stay away from number three but uh, that was then this is now it's Kyler Murray how does he feel about getting hit and I think we'll figure that out once preseason begins but uh, a little bit of a different vantage point for us here on cards cover to the first two days of training camp we've been out in the stands but on this Saturday afternoon and because the crowds a little bit larger they're utilizing both sides of the field so we're coming to you from the south end zone and you can see a little bit more here, but uh, we'll continue to monitor training camp. But as we talk about the pads coming on, and yes, it's the interior, the offensive lineman, the defensive lineman. Is that where your eyes will be focused not only today but tomorrow as well? Yes, and, and also, you know, outside backers and sometimes running backs and, you know, guys that are the safety net and the safety valve for the quarterback, pass protection. So, you know, curious to see. But, again, uh, there's a way to practice. You don't, Everyone's on the same team here, not trying to beat the Cardinals. Now, Adrian Wilson, we are in Flagstaff. I mean, you know, he, he's kind of moody at times, but he's a leader. And what, leads A-Dub by ex- Moody? Yeah, a little bit. Um, but he, he leads by example. But there would be like, you, you didn't know when it was going to happen. It could be like the fourth day, the fifth day, and he would lay someone out. I remember him laying out Damian Anderson, the running back from Northwestern, who worked for the for the organization in the front office and did some broadcasting. I believe he still lives in the Valley. And there there were other guys, Mario Bates. So Adel would lay the lumber just to send the message that, you know, we're here to play football once the pads get on. Now, I guess you could say the first real big hit of training camp happened yesterday. It was not by design, but uh, Larry Fitzgerald coming across the middle met Byron Murphy, and Murphy took Fitz to the ground and immediately put his hands up and said, hey, my bad. And uh, the big talk this morning was, was anything said to Murphy and he said no I just kind of kept running and realized my mistake and Kingsbury was not that he was okay with it but you know look there's a lot of traffic sometimes especially on crossing routes contact is going to be made but let's make sure we're uh, keeping care of some of these players on the field including number 11. Yeah when we say a pad at practice you know we're not talking about a preseason game and it's usually a scripted scrimmage which we'll see possibly next week and the red and white practice coming up next Saturday but you know, you don't want guys on the ground, okay? That's where guys get tangled up. That's where you can get a guy that, you know, gets hit backside, and the next thing you know, he's got a knee injury. So you want to stay on the gr- off the ground. And when we get to more severe, uh, I guess, more physicality, like maybe tomorrow or next week uh, before they get ready for their first preseason game against the Chargers, um, you, you want to see guys put themselves in position technique-wise to make a tackle. They don't want to see anybody on the ground. That's that's the rule here. And, again, uh, they're playing against their own guys, so you're not trying to go out there and up someone at the same time. And, again, for those that might be catching us for the first time here on Cards Cover 2, the offense wearing red, the defense in white, and, of course, the quarterbacks in black. And, Everyone turning their attention to number one, and that is Kyler Murray. Before we get into what we saw a little bit yesterday and some of the highlights, the news of the day here at State Farm Stadium on this Saturday. One, it's not great news, MJ, but I guess it could be a lot worse. But Kingsbury announcing this morning that linebacker Hassan Reddick had a minor knee procedure done 
and will be out a few weeks. Nothing specific as far as a timetable, but that is certainly a loss because he is that starting inside linebacker next to Jordan Hicks. It's going to open up some time for Dennis Gardak. More on that in a moment, but certainly the loss of Reddick for any amount of time here because this is a big season, his third year. That is going to be a big-time loss. It is, and, you know, Dennis Gardeck is a guy that's been waiting for that opportunity. I mean, I'll be frank. I mean, I want Hassan Reddick out there. It was arthroscopic knee surgery. And, you know, it's always minor when it's on somebody else, but uh, it's really going there and cleaning out some loose particles and making sure that the knee doesn't lock up where the meniscus is. So the good news is it happened. They were able to obviously take care of it. But I anticipate maybe when they break camp, they get back down to Tempe, is where he'll start to practice again, and I anticipate he'll be ready for the opener. They definitely need Hassan Reddick. Absolutely, but as they say, next man up, and that was Gardek, who was running with the first team defense yesterday, and we'll see him here this afternoon as well. And here's someone that a year ago, an undrafted rookie free agent, did not play a single snap defensively, but made his mark on special teams, one of the better special teams players not only on the Cardinals but the entire NFL and now he has been given an opportunity he talked about it a little bit in the locker room following the walkthrough this morning and he is quote soaking in the opportunity unquote because this is a big deal for him look it's hard regardless of how you get into the league but when you're undrafted that becomes even much more difficult to kind of maintain you know a career four five six plus years if you will yeah and and the fact that you know he can also play a little bit outside now. I know that Brooks Reed is off PUP, and they went out and, you know, obviously addressed the position. So curious to see, but obviously you want to settle in at one position. And you can see some of the drills that are going on right now. We're talking about technique. It's about squaring up, making sure your head's up, and you make the tackle with your shoulder as your head is to the left or right. So you can see every single position right now is going through drills when it comes to just technique alone on when you have to make a tackle in the open field. Yeah, and Gardeck uh, was talking about what he was able to do last season. There was, you know, I asked the question about him not being able to play any defense, but he took a lot of pride in what he was able to do special teams-wise. And, again, not a single defensive snap, but here he is with an opportunity here in training camp opening up some eyes for the coaching staff. And he actually did that in the offseason. Vance Joseph on the Coach's Chronicle podcast brought up Dennis Gardeck on his own when asked about guys who had been making a mark or maybe stepping up their game and not the usual suspects in that linebacker's room, a Hicks, a Suggs, or a Jones. Yeah, and, and, and the fact is when you watch him practice, and usually it's a lot of undrafted free agents, the Trent Sherfields, the Ezekiel Turners, you know, Dennis Gardeck, uh, when you see a guy out there that maybe he's not a top pick or he's, you know, he's guaranteed a roster spot if you're drafted in the first four rounds, the way he practices, if you're a guy, you know, trying to make the roster, you say, I'm going to play like that. Now, you know, when you are when you know the system like he has now, working, he's been there the whole entire offseason, then the situation is now he can play a lot faster. So I'm curious to see how he does, but he provides great depth for that inside linebacker position. Well, some other news items here on this Saturday. You mentioned Brooks Reed off the PUP list. He's was placed on that list because of a hip issue. So now five guys remaining on PUP, Dante Booker, Charles Clay, Max Garcia, Robert Kimdichie, and Brandon Williams. When we talk about Clay, that is an outside linebacker. And outside of Suggs Jones, there's some depth. And that's why, one, Reed was brought in, and then, two, why it was such not a glaring but something that was a little bit eye-raising. Hey, he's not here, but he is out on the field here this afternoon. That's number 50 for those uh, following along here on this special edition of Cards Cover 2. Yeah, another guy that we talked to, uh, you know, people in, in Atlanta, and this guy, he plays with his hair on fire in practice, so a high-energy guy. Kind of reminds me of, a, you know, Kyle Vandenbosch when he got a little bit older in his career. Uh, he obviously played for the Cardinals, I want to say the Lions, and finished up with the Titans. And, you know, those are the guys that, you know, they're going to run to the ball, and may not make the tackle, but somebody else can come in and scoop it up. So I want to see this team become a more tackling team as a group, not just one or two guys. How about this drill here as we switch over to the defensive backs, the tip drill, if you will, on the near side of the field, something that we haven't seen in training camp so far. But 
you're looking at Marcus Robertson throwing a pass up in the air, and then the first defender tips it high in the air, and then the back defender tries to locate the football. And again, most of your interceptions are going to come off the tip ball as opposed to a ball finding you right in the numbers. But uh, again, this is where you get your work in. This is kind of where you get your experience, if you will, before the start of the regular season. Yeah, and, and deflected balls and tip balls. I mean, if this team's going to play man-to-man press covers across the board, they're going to they're going to be in somebody's face, and they're going to be hip-to-hip on the sidelines. And if a ball's that close and you can just get your finger in there as a pass breakup or deflection, the ball's tip, then you're hoping your safeties or defensive backs are around. So, again, you can never have too many uh, turnovers, at least forced turnovers. Speaking of the secondary, you will not see D.J. Swearinger on the field in action. He is on the field but not at practice he missed practice yesterday gonna miss practice again today because in the words of Kingsbury he has a soft tissue injury nothing serious but uh, this early in training camp you certainly want to be cautious more than anything else yeah and Josh Shaw was was a pickup in the offseason now he's got position flexibility I spoke to him in the locker room this morning and he, he said you know I can play free safety I can play uh, slot corner, I could play outside corner. So looks like Josh Shaw, you know, besides Rudy Ford, could be your backup. Doesn't sound like he's a strong safety like Swearinger, but he's more of a free safety, a guy that can freelance a little bit, but also he could play slot and outside. And that's one way you can make the team is possession flexibility. The other safety that saw some first team defensive reps yesterday, in addition to Shaw, was Tyler Sigler. Here's an undrafted rookie free agent, and Kingsbury was asked about him earlier today and had a great great quote. I don't really know how he got here, but he's physical, he's athletic, and I'll say this to Coach, a little bit of a a PSA, if you will. Go to azcardinals.com. Kyle Odegaard wrote about Sigler earlier this offseason. In fact, he was actually a guest on Cards Cover 2 who missed a couple of days during OTAs because he squeezed in his wedding around oh, Cardinals so practices. Saying no honeymoon? Uh, that was going to come after, I believe, when the rookies left at okay. the end of June. That was a few June. weeks, there. But, uh, yeah, this was – and, again, and we, he was great, but he was talking about, you know, how, how do you squeeze in a wedding? Well, now look, if you've been married or are married, you know that it's a six-, nine-month process, the planning – Yet they planned it and weren't quite ready for the schedule to come out. And uh, But the Cardinals were uh, fortunate enough, nice enough to say, okay, we'll let you off the hook here for a couple of days. Go get married, come back, and then get back to work. He's got, you know, good size. He, he, he'll he obviously have to put some weight on. And, and obviously when you're eating at, in, in the cafeteria or at the hotel and you're lifting weights and you're, you have some protein shakes, he's going to put some weight on. But he's he's got good range. You don't. I was wondering if he can slide over the corner, but – probably too tall those corners need to be five nine six feet because you got to be able to turn your hips when you're covering a wide receiver hip to hip down the field so but worst case scenario practice squad guy I mean um, a guy that obviously went to a small school so I'm sure his you know he's learning a brand new system at the NFL level and we know the game's a lot faster yeah he was invited to the Giants rookie mini camp and got out of there and came and was signed by the Cardinals following his three-day rookie mini camp invite uh, earlier in the offseason. One other note on the defense, defensive lineman Vincent Valentine, for those that were here at practice yesterday, about an hour in, went down, appeared to be grabbing his right knee. Kingsbury said Valentine should be good here shortly. What's that mean? Who knows? But again, we talk about depth, and anytime there's an injury, all of a sudden the question becomes what about the depth? And Valentine within that defensive lineman's room, uh, he might be one of those guys that you would plug in as far as a rotation guy, especially because of the uncertainty with Robert Kimdichie. And then after that, there's really not much in that room as far as resume that the Cardinals can count on in 2019. Yeah, I mean, it's so important that the, you know, the three starters stay healthy. You know, Rodney Gunter's coming off a career year. We know Corey Peters is steady Eddie there. And then I'm intrigued with Darius Phylon just from the standpoint his snap count went up every single year with the uh, Los Angeles Chargers. But, they're, you know, obviously they're trying to work some other guys in, Michael Dogby, Zach Allen. Um, so I mean, you like to get seven guys there, and I don't think the roster is secure right now until we get closer to the regular season when it comes to the D-line. 
Again, you are watching a special edition of Cards Cover 2 here on this Saturday afternoon from State Farm Stadium. Cards Camp 2019 as the Cardinals are going into full pads here for the first time in training camp. It is day three, but the first day in pads, and again, they'll be in pads as well on Sunday. And for those coming out to State Farm Stadium this weekend, a uh, traffic advisory for those that are coming west, the I-10 westbound from 35th Avenue to 43rd Avenue is closed this weekend. azcardinals.com has all your information. So, in other words, plan accordingly as you head out here to the West Valley. Now, I came from the Tuke, the biggest cul-de-sac in the state, Ahwatukee, and I put it in my GPS. I had no issues. Now, I obviously got here a little bit earlier. So, put it in your GPS, and then they'll show you where the detour goes, and then you can get back on the freeway at some point. Position drills continue here as we come to you from the south end zone as the Cardinals going through full pads and quarterbacks in their position drills. And we saw this during minicamp and offseason workouts throwing into the netting. And now a little bit different because they've got tackling dummies on other side of them as far as moving and pivoting around defenders, trying to gain a little bit more room and time in the pocket and uh, Kyler Murray now up taking the snap and we'll see what he's able to do but one of the more accurate quarterbacks not only in college but certainly the Cardinals hope in the NFL and right there bullseye dead center for Kyler Murray he can throw darts and you can see head coach Cliff Kingsbury who obviously is an innovative play caller and also will be calling plays and we've got a chance to watch practice and you see Kingsbury when he's calling plays on the sidelines with the headset a lot different from college I'll say this though Drew Anderson, he's got a really strong arm. Um, you know, I'm curious to see. They're probably only going to keep two quarterbacks on the active roster, but you want to have one on the practice squad to just take some reps during work. So I think he's in a battle with uh, Charles Knopf. But Anderson, ever since I've watched him, he's got a really strong arm. And I think between Hunley, Knopf, and Anderson, they're going to play a lot in the preseason. And this is a drill that – Correct me if I'm wrong, MJ. I don't believe we saw a year ago or when Palmer was the quarterback or when Warner was the quarterback because it's that scrambling ability of a Murray. And that was talked about yesterday because this is going to be by design. You are going to see some drills here in training camp. Hey, look, pocket breaks down. Let's scramble. Let's buy some time because the receivers are also going to have to get used to that. It's no longer just a five, seven-step drop. Look for the receiver. It could be a seven-step drop, but all of a sudden becomes two, three additional seconds because with Murray's skill set and his running ability, all of a sudden you're buying time to allow the wide receivers to get open. And look, we're a little uh, you know, razzle-dazzle here. And Brett Hundley, did you see the reaction when he uh, threw a dart? Kingsbury gave him the old fist pump. He was excited about that. Yeah, I mean, Kyler Murray, he's going to be dangerous. That's why he's, you know, we don't see dual threats. I know RG3 didn't survive. Michael Vick was a little bit different. You know, you see uh, Lamar Jackson right now. Uh, Patrick Mahomes can get out of the way, Aaron Rodgers, so to speak. Uh, but Kyler Murray, and, and I think he's going to sit in the pocket and try to make the throws. Look at that, using his left hand right uh, there. Working on the pitch. Yeah. And to me, he's going to be a, a – not even a dual threat. He's going to be a weapon in the red zone. Imagine him on the 10-yard line, fakes uh, the run, maybe a play to the left side, and he runs right to the pylon for a touchdown. So I think Murray's going to be really effective in the red zone, and uh, I, I do anticipate him getting some rushing touchdowns. That's all he's got to do is get to the pylon if the defense can get sucked to the other side of the field. Of course, they're pitching it to the running backs, and the running backs right now working with running backs coach James Saxon and now it's not so much getting the handoff for them, but moving out and then moving into a receiving position. And of course, we know David Johnson is an excellent receiver out of the backfield. Chase Edmonds has shown that skill as well. Question is, outside of those two, how many running backs does this team keep because of the uh, proliferation, if you will, of just the passing attack and needing more guys as far as being able to catch the football as, far, as opposed to getting the handoff as you see James Saxon working with the running backs here. Yeah, you know, if you go three tight ends, and it's all speculation, It does. it's a numbers game. you keep 26 offensive players because you want to go heavy at the uh, wide receiver position? Do you keep 24 on defense because some guys in the secondary have position flexibility? Um, but for the most part, I mean, I think T.J. Logan is a guy that has some speed. 
Uh, it appears that D.J. Foster's not practicing. He's got a ball cap on. But I, I think they keep four running backs. Now it's a matter of we know that Edmonds and Johnson are the one-two punch. But how do you get these other guys involved? And we know Foster and Logan can play on special teams. I think four is too many for me, especially if you've got some wide receivers who can be special teams guys, especially on the return game. Then maybe you go a little bit light in the running back room. But, of course, it all comes down to how healthy are you entering week one but uh as far as foster i mean he had been practicing the first couple of days so perhaps this just uh, a day off as they ease him into training camp and because this is the first full day in pads don't forget suffered an acl last off season so that's something that usually takes a complete full year before you're 100 percent and teams are they're going to be cautious i mean you got max garcia coming off a torn acl they're counting on him to be ready uh, brooks reed's already off pup so you know, we sit there and go, okay, it's hard to make the team when you're not practicing. You know, you can't make the team in the tub, they say. But you want to be cautious because the goal is to get to September with a healthy football team. As we continue to focus here on this special edition of Cards Cover 2 on the offense, the wide receivers, as far as some of the highlights from yesterday's practice. And, of course, uh, there were a number of big catches, and perhaps the biggest one that got the biggest attention from the fans was Andy Isabella, who – maybe a little bit outran the route and had to come back for the football on a pass that was thrown by Brett Hundley. He rerouted himself and was able to beat Byron Murphy for a nice catch. And there were a couple of nice catches from Isabella throughout practice yesterday. Yeah, I think we got a chance to see that throughout the draft process. And we know how excited Cliff was when they made the draft pick. You know, it's it's a work in progress, but you can't teach speed. Um, I, he's a good route runner. It's just he's got to secure the ball when he gets it. But um, I, I think, you know, maybe we get to, you know, midway through the season, you're going to see more production from a guy like Andy Isabella. But the fact is that, you know, you watch the film, he, he played well in big games against the SEC, and that's encouraging to me. Well, the one thing that stood out to me about Isabella specifically yesterday in practice is we all know about his speed. We've seen it on film. We've read about it. But if you're standing on the sideline and you see him come across the middle, which we all expect is to be his bread and butter as far as being able to catch it on the run and then turn up field, his speed, his quickness, that is something that uh, was eye-opening to me just to be able to see it in person. Yeah, and if they go 10 personnel, which is four wide, one back, you can you can also move the back in motion if you choose to, or you just hand the ball off to him because the defense may think that they're going to have to go and drop back in coverage. But you know, Isabella, let's say hypothetically they go four wide, I would assume Christian Kirk and Isabella will be your slot receivers. They'll run that short crossing route, and it's an easy throw as long as Kyler can find a, a lane or a crease, and then yards after catch. You see you know, Julian Edelman do it for years, Danny Amendola, um, even a guy like Brandon Cooks when he's playing inside. So if you get off the press coverage and you can make that, that quick slant, it's an easy throw for the quarterback if he's open. Yards after catch, worst case is you just run out of bounds and get a first down. The other receiver who stood out yesterday had a nice catch is Farrell Cooper, number 12, who we know can return punts, can return kicks. He did it for the Rams, was a pro bowler for the Rams in that area, but now someone who wants to kind of increase his resume and add another skill set, and that is catching the football. He had a nice catch on a deep ball down the near sideline against Murphy, a pass that was thrown by Kyler Murray, but there's another guy, and when we talk to wide receivers, we know who the first two are, who are going to be the next four maybe next five yeah we're gonna to need to let it play out I thought Kevin White stood out the first day I thought Murray had a great throw on the left side through the right shoulder only one guy was going to be able to get it I think when you look at Demir Bird based on his speed and Farrell Cooper based on his speed I think they're one two right now when it comes to kickoff return and punt return now it's a matter of you know we know that they drafted three receivers but I do think uh, maybe I don't know if you can keep both but obviously, when you're talking about speed and you look at Cliff Kingsbury's offense, they want speed because they want guys in space where they can get yards after catch. Well, when we bring up speed and, and just the, the quickness as the quarterbacks here are all throwing, but just the how quick the ball gets out of the hand of Kyler Murray and the number of different ways he can throw the football over the top, uh, sidearm, uh, short release, 
And then obviously, if he needs to crank it up, throw the deep ball, which we've seen so far through the first three days. He's got a nice deep pass. He's got nice touch. But it's just the ability to get the ball out as fast as possible uh, as he tries to find uh, Keyshawn Johnson in the back of the end zone on that play. You know, one thing I think we noticed that right away when we got a chance to watch the open portion of practice when it came to Kyler Murray and how hands-on Cliff Kingsbury was, just how fast he gets rid of that ball. Now, one thing... Um, that's obvious, and I haven't heard a lot of people talking about it. He throws a perfect ball, very not, not catchable. Not to interrupt you, MJ, but just uh, moments ago, Murray and Johnson talking with one another, and it was Murray who initiated the conversation after that earlier incompletion of the back of the end zone. That's something that we've heard players talk about. Murray, despite his first-year status, not afraid to come up and say, look, what can I do better? Here's what I think you can do better so we have a successful Well, play. It, it's gonna, it helps when you run the right route or obviously you know you don't want to have mental errors. Or where do you prefer I put the football? Yes. I mean, I, it can't be perfect every time, but sure. you know, which shoulder, which, where do you want me to lead you? Yeah, but I, I want to get back to the, the way he – not the way he throws the football, but it's very catchable for all these receivers. Uh, he can throw into tight windows. He's very accurate. So that's something that you'll see during the season because um, – you know, again, they're not going to throw it 50, 60 times a game, but they're definitely going to line up and try to exploit some weaknesses, and that's more of a chess match between the head coach and the play caller and the defensive coordinator from the opposing team. But I, I love the way he throws it because uh, it's it's natural. He's not forcing it. Um, guys know where to go, and if you make your cut like Warner and Palmer, sometimes the ball will be there, and then you can try to get some yak yards after catch after that. He did make a mistake yesterday on a deep pass down the middle of the field during seven on seven trying to get a pass to Christian Kirk and ball was overthrown and Patrick Peterson had a wonderful over the shoulder catch and it was asked about it afterwards in the locker room asked about what he's thought about Murray and Peterson said quote very very special but he has to look away from 21. That's and not that, the first and that, time. And that, he... and that right there is just Patrick Peterson in a nutshell. Yeah, well, it's not the first time. Actually, when Patrick uh, showed up for off-season workouts, he got a pick. Now maybe it was, a, hey, I'm going to throw him a pick. Um, but, I mean, it's going to happen. We always focus on the offense. Defense gets paid. You know, the offense is going to win one day. The defense will win the next day. And, it, it, and that creates competition and camaraderie amongst the, the guys. I mean, nobody wants to get beat at the point of attack. But as long as you go out there and play with technique and do your part, um, I think you, you'll see this team come together over the next six weeks. One last note on the wide receivers. Uh, for those that might have missed it, yesterday as the NFL Network is going through its top 100 players of 2019, Larry Fitzgerald landed on the list at number 60. And I saw this by Darren Urban on easycardinals.com. Fitz has now been on this list for nine straight years or for how many times this list has been put out every single season, Larry Fitzgerald finds his way on the top 100 list. A year ago, he was 27. And even after a down season because of what we know about the offense last season, still the respect is there, the talent is there to land at number 60 on the top 100 players of 2019. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you know. Obviously, there's DeAndre Hopkins, Odell Beckham, Jarvis Landry. I mean, Adam Feline, Stephon Diggs. I mean, there's a lot of good young receivers. So I'm just glad he made the list. Um, I think it's worthy of, of where they have him, maybe in the 50s. But uh, he's the first Cardinal so far. I anticipate Chandler Jones, Patrick Peterson. Um, I don't think David Johnson, if he didn't make 51 to 100, coming off a down year, but I do think we're going to have a few more Cardinals, and, and I think Chandler Jones and Patrick Peterson. Continuing coverage here of the first padded practice here at State Farm Stadium as Cards Camp 2019 continues this special edition of Cards Cover 2. And one of the interesting news items so far, or the big difference that we've seen so far in training camp between Cliff Kingsbury and some of the other coaches, not only previous Cardinals coaches, but around the NFL, is the mid-practice break. Halftime. Halftime. Kingsbury, halfway through practice, yells out, it's halftime. And then, of course, a cart rolls up with some fruit so guys can hydrate and get a little bit re-energized. But uh, what has been described as a snack break? No, Kingsbury said it's not a snack break. It's halftime. So we can, again, 
re-energize, rehydrate, and then get on to the second half of practice just as you would on Sundays getting ready for the second half. Exactly. Instead of you know going in the locker room now, they do bring out some fruit as you said, some some power bars. Um, but I noticed the first couple of days, David Johnson's like the first guy over there, and Kyler Murray, he was he was wondering, you know, what's on the on the tray. Um, listen, I seen DJ Humphreys come over and get one of those um, like fruit popsicles. They're really good, like the straw, like the cherry and strawberry. And he said it actually cools them down. Now, if you haven't been out here, they they run an up tempo, or at least try to get on the ball. And that puts a premium on the offense alignment and the D lineman. I remember Chandler Jones was doing an interview after practice the other day, and he was sweating. That's because of the tempo of the practice. So these guys are hydrated. Every time they walk in the, around the hotel, uh, the uh, the stadium here at State Farm, there's water everywhere. So you got to stay hydrated. But it gives them a little bit of break. And the key word is hydration. Hydration. You don't want to be dehydrated. Well, and the one thing you've noticed with Kingsbury and how he runs practice, there is no wasted time on this field even if your group isn't doing something or on the main field like during special teams then they're off to the side working with their position coach because again you're only out here for a limited amount of time and the question is what are you doing with that time and that is to make sure that you are getting instruction or you're going through some kind of uh, drill just to kind of maintain and get into football shape for the regular season ahead yeah and you know they cardinals players they wear this vest and they have a computer on the sidelines, and it tallies how many steps or miles that player has done so far in practice, and then they tally it up so they know when to back off of players when guys maybe had more than they anticipate. I'm not saying anybody's on a pitch count, but I assume some guys coming back from injury, again, they want to be on the, you know, on the side of caution because the focus is to get ready for the regular season. First padded practice here on this Saturday. Pads will be on again on Sunday but the start of practice will be a little bit earlier than it was here today, and that will be at 1 o'clock, and we will have coverage as well here on Cards Cover 2. And with that, we'll sign off here on this Saturday afternoon. Special thanks to those behind the scenes, Jim Omohundro and Devin Henry. Cards Camp 2019, first padded practice, day three, and so far, so good. As Kingsbury said, Real football is now officially underway. For Mike Jarecki, I'm Craig Riolu. This has been Cards Cover 2 from Cards Camp 2019.